Hey there everyone and welcome to another Near Monsters video. This is the start of a new series which I'm very excited to bring to you. I've put quite a lot of effort into this and the five videos which will be coming up as part of this series which I plan to do annually. This particular video is a lot longer than the others because the uh, Earth got a huge revamp this last year. Loads of monsters have been added. They've pretty much doubled the number of legendaries and mythics. So um, it's going to be longer. So don't get too put off because I do think there is a lot to be gained from these videos and I th hope you do thoroughly enjoy them. So what these videos are doing is reviewing all the monsters that came out in the last year. You'll see in the game in the monster decks you can look at the monster analysis which tells you how the monsters work and maybe what you can do with them uh, but it doesn't actually tell you whether the monsters are any good. This review is going to show you, uh, it's going to be talking about the monsters again but talking about how they're actually any good and what you might use them in uh, that kind of angle, while the monster analysis in the game is more about teaching you how to use them. It's more kind of targeted towards the newer players. Before we jump into this video, I'd like to talk about my Patreon for a moment. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a place where you can pledge to pay me an amount monthly. Now why would you want to do this? Normally, uh, Patreon, you can offer rewards for those depending on how much they uh, pay you. I'm not doing that so much. I will put names at the end of my longer videos for my patrons. However, ultimately this is a place for if you would like to support me by offering me a bit of money, maybe it's because you enjoy my videos, you enjoy my guides, you enjoy the other work I do in the community. This is mainly for King's Road people where I do a lot more work um, making unofficial announcements and, and the like. But if you do feel like you would like to support me in this way, then I would very much appreciate it. I have had lots of people interested in doing this for me, uh, for me so I've decided to finally create a Patreon. This is the official place for doing it. Now as a promise, if I do get some Patreons, I will try to be more consistent with my video and guides at work. I tend to be a bit more sporadic, so I will try to be a little bit more consistent and maybe I'll be doing more of these uh, videos like the one you're about to see, which is a little bit longer and more presentation style, uh, a little bit higher quality. So if you're interested in doing this, then great. Otherwise, there's absolutely no expectation. You do not have to do this. This is just simply for those people who are interested in doing this. So thanks, and let's go into the video. The topic of this video is all the Earth monsters that came out in 2019. Now, I'm doing it by the anniversary year rather than the calendar year because it makes a little bit more sense in terms of what happens in the game because each anniversary, sometimes things change up a bit. Uh, I'm also going to be including the Halloween monsters as well as the anniversary monsters from 2019 because they came out at roughly the same time. It's very easy to put them into this video. So next, next year we'll be doing everything from Halloween onwards from 2019 plus then all of 2020. So those videos are going to be split up into three sections. The first section we're going to go through the themes and sub-themes of the element. That is talking about uh, basically supported archetypes in the format. So for example with Earth, a very common one here is throw. So the throw theme is going to be a big, a big part of the element. And basically what we're doing first of all is looking at what is there before the new monsters. So what the element could do before 2019 monsters. Then we're going to go through the next section which is talking about all the new monsters. That's going to be the longest section where we're reviewing each of the monsters. Some of them I'll skip over quite quickly if they're not that interesting or not that powerful. But we're going to be talking about each one and how good they are. And then the last section we're going to be talking uh, about how things have changed with these new monsters. So uh, how the normal themes and stuff have progressed how the sub-themes have progressed, whether there are any new themes or sub-themes in the element. Earth here is particularly interesting because so many monsters have been added. There's quite a lot which has changed since the beginning of the year. And then also we're going to look at towards the future and see what Earth could have in the future that maybe fits with the element but boosts it in some of the areas uh, where it's, it's really struggling. Now as with all my longer videos, there are lots of links in the description to get to particular points in the video where you can come back to this for reference or otherwise if you come away from the video then come back later you can skip to particular points. So what we're looking at here is every single legendary and mythic in Earth. Now this includes the new ones however when I'm going to be going through the themes in a second I'm not going to include the new ones that came out in this last year. So what I'm going to talk about here is more kind of the stats of them rather than any of the other details that are shown here. So if you look at the summary table you can see the the stats broken down, both the, the defense and attack um, stats there, and then the, the speed. And I'm going to talk through these bullet points which I have labeled here. So this year we've had 
16 new mythics and legendaries which takes the total from 15 to 31 so it slightly over doubles the amount we've also had a lot of super epics so what does element earth have compared to the other elements well they are very tanky monsters the two tanky elements are holy and earth and compared to holy earth has more focus on the full defense so like the absolute full-on defense um, but they just generally have a lot of standard defense and full defense monsters in general. You also have a, uh, a lot of them being slow, especially in the slow category as opposed to very slow. And by that I mean the 31 to 50 percent category. You can see there are 13 monsters there. Um, over a third of the monsters are in that slow speed range. Which being slow means they've got high health. So high health with the high st uh, standard defense and uh, the high defense I mean, sorry. Um, means they're going to be very very tanky monsters however typically that means they struggle in pvp and obviously a lot of this revamp in the last year has been to try and make earth viable in pvp because throw was originally very good uh, i speak about throw because earth was the original throw element and um, in the old days of the game things didn't one shot quite so much so having tanky monsters which could um, also heal using those rocks um, worked out totally fine however as time's gone on things have become a bit more damaging and they're able to kill these these tanky monsters so throw needed a little bit of a little bit of a boost and earth did in general just because it was getting held behind because of throw being such an important archetype for the element we also have um, almost all the monsters well 80 percent of them being in the sort of mid speed range and as I say mid speed it's, it's basically knocking out the top end and the bottom end there are very few super fast earth monsters and they also don't have too many very slow monsters um, they're kind of just very much in the mid range compared to the other uh, the other elements that's very noticeable so now to going into the first theme well the first theme we're going to talk about is has got to be throw because that's the main classic um, earth theme this is not including any of the monsters which came out in the last year none of these themes will do so what we've got here on the left side you can see the super epics and then we go into the legendaries on the right side got Bahamas in the middle that was the 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 backbone so I had to put it in the middle um, the original backbone of the throw strategy because he's got the summon swarm to summon six rocks now these days Bahamas is not so happy he's not so good he has got a powerful secret skill but ultimately throws struggle with time like I was saying because the damage is typically low and they were revolved around healing themselves in order to keep themselves alive where which doesn't really work so well today now what they do do very well as a theme is they all support each other beautifully because like with poison where you poison all the enemies and then other poison monsters want the enemies to be poisoned so they all help each other out throw they all want to create rocks and then they all use the same rocks so it's a very it's got high potential as a theme and I'm very interested to see how it goes in the future and we'll see over the course of this video which new throw monsters have been added and how it's been helped out with time. The next theme to talk about is protector theme. Now there are not many here as you can see I was kind of reaching for something outside of throw. There are a lot of throw monsters there which can go into that theme but there's not much protectors. However Earth is known for protectors mainly for these two on the right. Both are incredibly powerful protectors and protectors just generally as a theme they work very well in, in a lot of teams. We've now over this last year picked up a lot of protector counters. However with strong protectors you can typically use them in teams and they work very well. Now going into the sub themes for Earth, we've got the Mortar sub theme. Again, only three monsters, but we haven't got too many Mortar monsters in the game, so it's no surprise really. And what we've got here in particular in Earth is two monsters in Botanic and Sarkra Sphinx, which are very good supportive Mortar type monsters. So as more Mortar, mortar monsters come to the game, Earth is definitely going to be at the forefront helping Mortar teams work. If you have either of these two monsters and is a particular monster, Griff King. If you have them, you can loop things and really get Mortar going. Um, so Mortar, kind of in its infancy at this point, before the last uh, the last year, where we've had a few more. You'll see as as we go through the video, but definitely some potential in Earth for getting some good Mortar stuff going on. And then we go to Poison. Um, I actually accidentally in didn't include the Epic, which did get revamped. There's one with Link Double Poison Eater that that very much is viable. 
um, but I didn't think of epics at the time when making this. But anyway, what does Earth do for poison? It hasn't got that much there, but I, again, I was stretching. It's a little sub theme. It's definitely in Earth. There is some poison. And what it seems to do compared to the other elements is it has this poison siphon. So as you can see, the two poison siphon monsters in the game are both in Earth. So it's using this poison in order to heal itself. Similar to the throw strategy, having ways to having tanky monsters which can heal, it's the same kind of thing with earth poison. Seems to be that you have these monsters which can heal by using the poison, and they don't do like super high damage with that poison siphon. It did actually get buffed, but uh, so it does do good damage now, but it doesn't do incredible damage. It doesn't kill things. Now taking a look at all the monsters that have been added to the game. So we start off with Super Epic. Some of these I'm going to brush over quite quickly just for the sake of time. Abyss Soldier Guardians, the first one we're looking at. So this is the first of Abyss Soldier, um, the first Abyss Soldier that we're seeing. And there are two for each element. We haven't had all of them yet at this point in time. But basically they work with the two passives. So they have Lone Fish. So if they're the only Abyss Soldier on the battlefield, then they get their attack and defense buff by 50%, which is very considerable. Uh, they basically have better stats than legendaries if if they are alone. And then if they're with other Abyss Soldiers, then they get a powerful passive. In the case of Abyss Soldier Guardian, it's Auto Protect Plus. So you can use them together and they have these powerful passives, or you can use them alone and then they're like a legendary, but maybe with well, no other passives and um, their moveset maybe is a little bit more restrictive. So anyway, this is the protector for the Abyss Soldiers. Um, you would have thought, okay, you want to use it with the other Abyss Soldiers. The Abyss Soldiers in general, they're a little bit more awkward. I think ultimately they're better to use by themselves because that stats boost is so considerable that when they have a good moveset, they actually work very nicely for their 10 cost. Abyss Soldier Guardian here, um, the moveset is very restrictive. Um, switch Frame can be very handy. Purify is always nice. A hit double, okay, that's not going to do anything. Um, but then, the double counter strike is the kind of the the thing to go for here. Uh, if you use this alone, then it can be a counter to uh, to fire PVE battles, and it's very good at that because with the attack and defense buff, the attack becomes really good for killing those fire monsters, and the defense becomes ridiculous. Now, if you use it with abyss orders, this one I would say is a bit kind of more on the like mediocre. Sure, Auto Protect Plus is great, but it's a super epic, so even with the high defense, it hasn't got shield, it hasn't got hold ground, it's not actually going to survive that well. And then the moveset to go with it, where if there are no fire monsters, then you're kind of, you've got, you've got no damage potential. And otherwise, the Solo Switch Friend, yes, that works for uh, bringing in another Abyss Order, because if you think about it, if this is on the battlefield with Auto Protect Plus, chances are it's going to die first. So if you want to get that Abyss Order synergy, maybe the, the stuff that will work with Auto Protect Plus, there's Abyss Order Mist in Water Element, which has Camouflage. Very good to have with uh, with Guardian. And so you can switch Friend maybe into the, the Mist. Now, the thing is, um, I just don't really think that Abyss Soldiers are going to work that well. They're not as strong as the other cycle of monsters. So um, ultimately, I think this is better used by itself just for the, the niche moments when you face uh, fire monsters in PvE and using it by itself. So let's move on to the next monster, which is Arbogaius. Now this came out a long, long time ago. One of the first featured super epics in an event. And it had a moveset that was like uh, a lot of the monsters from from the, the sort of general egg pools. So they made it unique. Now, since taking the screenshot, they've changed Ultra Stone to Kinslayer, so it can now kill Earth monsters reasonably well. Um, but ultimately, this is a bit of a gimmicky monster, very unique. It's got three Deathstroke moves. Ultimately, because it's got low speed and the moves have high seconds, it's not the most viable. It comes up in some instances where you might want to use this. Um, it's also a little awkward with having both Link and Solo as two different moves. you basically got to go for one or the other. You can't go for both. And then Draw sometimes doesn't really work in some teams. So basically you can have two of these Deathstroke moves. And maybe with a Give Turn you can get something going. But it, it's never going to be a great monster. So it's a bit of fun. Uh, just something a bit different. The next monster to go through is Armor Deator. Now this is where it gets really exciting. So Armor Deator um, has got it all. We were talking a moment ago about mortar monsters in Earth and how they have good setup for some potential. Well, this is even more potential. This is a combo crazy type monster. Now, 
the first thing we're going to talk about is the damage potential because it's not so noticeable from the stats that it's got rounded stats it doesn't look like it's high attack however when it's above 50 percent health the attack gets doubled so it's actually got about 7300 attack now with hellfire mortar all that means that if you're facing enemies that aren't buffed it can one shot a lot of them now against the tankier legendaries it doesn't one shot them it's only the less tanky legendaries but then all the super epics basically get one shot um mythics the, the the sort of easiest mythics to kill they get one shot but otherwise that's a that's a lot considering you can get this to plus nine it can actually be quite fast uh with the attacking and it's shielding itself while it's doing it uh it, it's very very good for a super epic so that has some potential for weaker teams uh, or newer players it's especially good as a damage dealer there uh, because with that shielding like i said it's much more reliable than other super epic damage dealers However, if its health does go below 50%, then it doesn't uh, doesn't perform very well. You need to maybe heal it in that case or something or other. But, you know, it's a super epic. You can't expect too much from it. The other important thing to note is the pullback mortar. The knockback mortar doesn't really count that much. I mean, when you've got the potential to, to kill all the enemies with hellfire mortar all, why would you knock back one? Um, so it, that very rarely comes up. But the pullback mortar is very powerful. Now, there's a particular combo that I would like to go through. Basically, it's with Sarko Sphinx or Botanic. Because they have the load all or load double, you can use them with Griff King and basically loop uh, the giving turn and loading. The, the turn order is Griff King gives turn to, say, Sarko Sphinx and Armadiator. Armadiator, sorry, uh, Sarko Sphinx uses load all. Armadiator then uses pullback and pulls back the fourth monster in your team. Then Griff King gets a turn again because uh, the give turn mortar is only 50 seconds. And if you've got Sarko Sphinx, you've accelerated it, maybe you potted it too. So it's like every, it could be every, say, 35 seconds. So Griff King gets a turn again. It's been loaded by the Sarko Sphinx, so it can give turn to Sarko Sphinx and Armadiator again. Sarko Sphinx does the load all, and then Armadiator does pull back on the fourth monster. Then you get Griff King turn again uh, 34 seconds later. Now, this does a loop of infinite pullback on the fourth monster so you can be switching between two monsters there now where that becomes super super overpowered is if you use it with like say tranquilizing entrance or uh, maybe shocking entrance and then what you're doing when you're doing that loop is it's so fast you can actually infinitely stun enemies so obviously you've got to set it up and the enemy team needs to be stunnable, but there's huge potential there, or otherwise just any other kind of entrance monster, maybe something with roaring entrance, so it comes in and then it can it can attack. Um, Sephiroth is a, a monster which um, is out now, but not when I'm making these videos, um, that has champion entrance and it has natural selection. It's a mythic, so it can kill any legendary or below as soon as it enters, and it stuns. It's perfect for this kind of thing where you can infinitely pull it back, keep bringing it in, and uh, just loop everything. So there's some great combo potential going on, otherwise pullback mortar infinite use is really really handy, um, but it is a super epic, it is a little bit limited, so if its health is low and you don't have a target to pull back, it can't really do that much, but it is definitely an excellent super epic. So moving on from that we're going to move to buff buffalo. Now this is a monster that was the first shop monster, um, it hasn't come out anywhere else yet, and only a few people have it, only the top spenders, because it's quite expensive to get. However, it's quite exciting because it's got both whole ground and stun immunity and a 50 second heal move. Those are basically the three things to focus in on here because the stun immunity gives it the reliability, so it can't get stunned and, and the, the, the healing can't stop from that. The whole ground means that it can use Purifying Ray on itself to keep healing itself off whole ground. And we know from Shiva Dragon that HP share 50 seconds is just broken. That is so powerful, and the only things which can get around it are poison or piercing. Now, purifying ray also purifies, which may be very useful for that instance that can maybe dodge the poison. Um, you can also turn this monster into a wall itself by using protect focus, and then you can keep using the purifying ray on itself. Now, I believe, because I haven't actually been able to test this monster, but I believe that purifying ray after protect focus only heals by 1 HP. But 1 HP over whole ground makes all the difference. So... You can turn this into a massive tank itself. It's got high speed as well, so it can come in and protect focus quite quickly and become that wall. And it's also got nice synergy with Link Earth in general, because for one thing it's a protector, very fits with the theme. Plus also it's got Rockoid Morph, so you can kill random dead weight that you don't want on your team and turn them into a rock at the back of the team. And then it's also got Assisted Quake, which 
like won't do anything if you use a protect focus but if you don't use protect focus then fine it can do some damage i mean it's 70 percent speed so coming in and doing a big hit on the enemies might come up sometimes basically pretty awesome protector i think as it goes for super protectors this is this is exciting like one of the the best ones you, you don't really get whole ground and stun immunity on a super epic so moving on from that we're going to talk about carapaska now carapaska is a bit of a wacky one it's kind of like an Onigeist in that it has a pullback effect that then creates a monster there in its place and it can do it three times. Now Onigeist was proven to be very very strong when combined with like pulling back say a tranquilizing entrance uh, monster and Carapaska can do the same thing. Um, Onigeist though has the advantage of whole ground and, and camouflage making it very very difficult to deal with. Um, Carapaska doesn't have that, it has Stun Absorber, which while Stun Absorber is great protection for your team, um, it's also a bit of a downside sometimes because this can be stunned out of the game. Now that's why you'll see this difference here between S for general and C plus for PvP is that this monster just kind of gets abused in PvP. It creates a beetle when it enters behind it and if you don't buff the beetle it becomes useless. So in PvP people will just stun this or otherwise control it and then you can't uh, you can't do much. But in PvE, you can definitely use this. It's a little awkward to use because things don't quite line up. Um, so if you use the Beetle Summon move, basically the Beetle will get a turn before you can boost it. Meaning you can't really then uh, like keep the keep the damage going. So it, you kind of need to skip with the boost, do the, uh, sorry, skip with the Beetle, do the Beetle boost on it, and then you can do Beetle Strike, which is a one-shot piercing attack uh, if there's a Beetle in play. So ideally, it can work very well, but in reality it can be a little wha too awkward or wacky. Um, you can also put a chain horn which you have from an uh, from the island monsters, um, sorry, which you picked up on the islands, and play it with this so you can have a chain horn before and then also when it comes in it creates one afterwards, so you can have multiple chain horns around it, you can boost those, they then become one shot um, uh, with their, they, they do one shots with their reckless attack, their blood crave, so uh, they kill themselves off after a couple of kills, but definitely a lot of value there. So, cool monster, uh, I find it great fun to play around at PvE, but it's ultimately more for the, the newer players, um, the more experienced players, ones with better collections, are more likely to use um, the legendaries and stuff, which can offer a bit more, a little less, less awkward to use. Next monster to talk about is Gyramid. Now this is quite cool because it combines mortar and throw in an interesting way. It's also got the combination of stun immunity and whole ground, which we were talking about just a minute ago, as being very, very strong. The fact it shields itself too, this is surprisingly tanky. So this is less so much a mortar monster. The reason being is in order to do damage, it either damages with Dreambit Mortar, so it can kill a sleep monster, or with Catapult. And to do Catapult, it needs rocks. Now creating the rocks itself, so say you just used it in a mortar team and no, no, um, no throw monsters, it's very, very slow. Doing load mortar, summon, load mortar, catapult, it, it's just super, super slow for dealing damage. That ultimately, this actually works better in throw teams as a very tanky monster with stun immunity that can do piercing damage. So I would say it's very much for throw teams. I'm being a little hesitant with the ratings on the tier list uh, with it because I think it's a, it's a bit slow and um, throw isn't like the the top tier strategy so um it, it requires a little bit of support but i think it is a lovely crossover for earth to have this um throw mortar monster that in the future with more mortar monsters more viable throw monsters and stuff it could really come into play as a good monster to use the next monster to talk about is rosen press this is a super epic evolution of an island monster the island monster is all about sleep and dream hunt and this is no different, it's an upgraded one. So this is rated really high in the tier lists for the main reason that when you start off the game, having a sleep and dream hunt monster is very, very good. 70 second sleep should never be underrated, it's very good for control, and there's a couple of legendaries which have it, which if you can pick them up and use them in PvE, it works brilliantly. So this is a free one that everyone can get that is great for the control now it has minimum defense it has low speed that's what you can expect from this stuff also you would think no defensive passes but actually it's got stealthy entrance and in fact the stealthy entrance lines up sneak attack if it doesn't get hit before it gets the turn which it, to be fair is quite unlikely um, that means it can have damage potential on its first turn and it's not just about the sleep and dream hunt but ultimately this is mostly about sleep control and dream hunt and it's good for that 
There's also a little bit of a uh, strategy coming out with um, Link Earth stealth stuff going on. So with that, you can stealth uh, Rose Impress and maybe line up that sneak attack past the entry. The next monster to talk about is Thlug Bob. So there's uh, been a cycle of Thlugs, which are um, mostly... Well, they're a bit wacky. They're, they're very similar movesets um, in both of the passives being the same. They are immune to poison, sleep, and stun. And then they all have a um, a, a passive. This one's called th uh, Thun. Uh, yeah, I said that right. Um, which is where they get killed by... If they get killed by another Thlug, then something happens. So here it's stunning all enemies for 170 seconds. Then they all can feast each other and have Zealous attack, so they can kind of kill themselves off if, if they get left alone. But basically they need to work as a unit, and as we've seen with, with the Thlugs, um, they work brilliantly if you use them with one-on-one -on -one because they have that immunity to sleep. So you get some control of the battle and then just start um, doing their piercing moves and, and feasting and stuff. It's a little complicated to analyse just one by itself, um, but ultimately this, this particular one is pretty good. Um, it's not a standout one, but um, it does have uh, a useful passive, the stun th passive. There's basically two which are particularly useful. One which sleeps all the enemies, this one which gets, stuns all the enemies. So if you can open up to stun, then this is a good one to feast um, and set up the other monsters. But ultimately, better to uh, better to look at, at the Thlugs in, as a whole. Um, if you go read up on them in the, anal the monster analysis or on the forum or, or anything like that, uh, you'll get a better understanding, rather than just looking at this one uh, Thlug in particular. It's not crucial to the overall strategy, uh, this particular one. It is just one of the alright ones. The next monster we're going to talk about is Willow Worm. Now, this has been nerfed since I took this screenshot, but uh, we're not really going to talk about that too much. It's just been nerfed a tiny bit. So this is like Heaven's Worm uh, with the moveset. It's got the Stun Flash, um, it's got Camouflage, it's got Raw Healing Light. This is all built, it's absolutely awesome. It's one of the best super epics in the game, especially, well, for PvP for certain. It's a brilliant stun absorber. Camouflage plus stun absorber is just excellent for shutting down time strike double or otherwise so many moves. Uh, There's so many double hitting moves that then can't kill this. And with stun absorbers, often you want to leave them on the field. Um, sorry, enemy stun absorbers, you want to leave them on the field to stun them because they're very easy to stun. But then at some point you might need to remove it in order to be able to stun the other stuff. And this having camouflage means that at the time when you want to remove it, it becomes a lot trickier to remove. So stun flash doesn't, well, basically use stun flash if it gets a turn. Often this gets stunned before it gets a turn. But anyway, you've got the stun flash, this is always a handy move to have. Um, Survivor and raw healing light, great. After a bit of time has passed, you can really do a lot with that. Kinslay, it doesn't have Kinslay anymore, it has Ultra Stone, but basically you got a hit move there if you need to hit them. Uh, ultimately I would now use just Survivor the whole time uh, for little chip damage. And yeah, really really good monster for stun protection and otherwise uh, adding a bit of support and damage uh, where needed. So now we move to the legendaries. So Arborobratus, this is a monster that combines with Oak Thulu. So you can see Oak Thulu here, I just kind of tagged it on so you can um, be reminded what, what kind of monster it is. This is a very interesting protect monster that also has poison. So it's auto protect stun absorb, which is a lovely combination for protecting your team from stun because they can't just leave the stun absorber there. We talked about it literally just a second ago um, with Willow Worm how camouflage plus stun absorb works very nicely. Also, auto protect plus stun absorb works very nicely because even if they do stun it, they can't leave it there, they've got to kill it unless they have raw moves and that kind of stuff. Now, the rest of it um, is kind of not what you'd expect on a protector. It's got some brilliant support moves plus also damage output. So the speed is not that great, but when it gets a turn, if any enemies are poisoned, if two of them are poisoned, you can double poison eater and you will do enough damage to kill both the enemies. Double poison eater is surprisingly strong. If one is poisoned, then it won't do enough, but basically you can do enough damage with that. And then um, it's also got this awesome combination move with Oak Thulu that damages and um, poisons all the enemies, so it instantly sets up double poison eater. So if you're doing that combination, if it gets a turn, it can immediately set up the double poison eater to then get two kills. And it doesn't matter so much that double poison eater is 200 seconds like it does on many other monsters because it's an auto protect, so they can't just leave it on the field for ages because it's not going to get a turn. It's actually going to draw the attacks in. Now what makes this really exciting is less so much 
the the damage potential. I just wanted to talk about that first because it is a protector and you wouldn't expect that. But actually it is the enraged teammate. Enraged teammate here doubles the attack of uh, of a teammate. Enraged teammate on lower four monsters it just does plus 50 percent but doubling is insanely good for a large number of things. I'm not going to go through all the combinations but basically there are there are quite a large number of things something which you wouldn't necessarily think about is monsters with piercing moves because suddenly if the piercing move say does good damage like half the health of a monster two-thirds of the health of a monster suddenly it becomes one shot and a really good case of this is say Delegazar where after one kill on Delegazar its double bloodthirst does about 2700 damage which can kill some super epics but uh, it can also kill some holy monsters um, because it does the sorry some holy legendaries because it does the extra damage against them but if you enrage teammate it suddenly that 2700 is actually 5400 so it one shots everything after just one kill on Delegazar so that kind of thing can come up really really nicely and Arborobratus I think is a brilliant monster for doing a lot of stuff with that it's very powerful and uh, one of the best protectors in the game our next monster is Black Titan. Now this is another exciting monster. It's a very interesting for the case that it has high speed and retreat. So you can actually use this in the front line to do entrance control uh, right at the beginning of the game, uh, of the battle. And uh, it also has a very interesting passive in that when it enters, the highest seconds monster at the time gets killed. Now that also counts as a kill for Black Titan. So it can get a turn, it can then, um, it gets a turn very quickly because it's 90 spent speed. It's set up the Poison Eater because of Toxic Entrance. It can get another kill, 100 second Poison Eater, and then when it gets back to the turn, even if they have been purified or whatever, which they may have been in that time, you can then follow up with Bloodthirst. It's also got True Hit, which is not necessarily the move you want to use because it's not the most damaging. Um, but if you if they have a Protector and there's a particular monster you need to hit, then True Hit can, uh, can get that for you at a higher seconds. Ultimately, this is just a really, really solid sweeper that can be used in the front line, both to give you entrance control, and also if you do entrance control into this, it can work very effectively. The Straggler's Doom passive that kills the uh, monster of higher seconds is much less hard for the, uh, sorry, I need to think of the correct phrasing there. It's harder for the opponent to abuse in the same way that White Titan is. White Titan gives the turn, so in PvP, the opponent can do, say, a hit all, uh, make sure that their monster is the higher second monster. White Titan enters and gives turn to their monster. Black Titan, they're going to panic and try to avoid having any of their monsters at the higher seconds when it enters. So it may make them mess up, or otherwise it's just harder for them to actually work around. That it does definitely work in your favour. Um, so with that, it also comes up in certain events where you need to, say, do things quickly or you uh it's hard to get kills so stragglers doom is great for getting a kill um or otherwise just having that toxic entrance really fast coming in sweeper it, this comes up as quite a niche um well when i say niche it, it, it's very unique in the way that it works and can be very good in certain cases the next monster to look at is Kanish Shogun. Now this has been a little bit, had a little bit of controversy around it. It was hyped up before its release quite a lot because it's got this very cool underdog passive. Oh, sorry, underdog secret skill. So the way this works is basically for lower star monsters. You really want to play it with the lower star monsters. Some of the best um, combinations to have it with are the high speed um, assisted hit all monsters, um, which then you can actually. I don't know if they're necessarily assisted or whether they're just hit all, I can't remember exactly, but basically you buff them up and then suddenly their hit all becomes really, really powerful. Um, or you can use it with special rocks or special monsters. They've released a few that are lower stars that are actually very viable that then you can use this with and then it this kind of shogun just benefits from being with them because it gets piercing and it can buff them up with the underdog if, if you want it to. Now, it can also create its own monsters within list, which a lot of people are down on the list move because it's 130 seconds, but having two gold oys is surprisingly good. Then, um, basically, high speed retribution as well. It doesn't really look like it works, but in fact it does because the underdog you use passes a bit of time and then it gets a turn and gets a retribution. Now, where this is really strong is just basically having uh, de serious damage potential on a stun converter monster, plus also having various support stuff going on with the underdog and the enlist that it's very flexible and works very nicely for different things. 
Also having the counter strike, uh, the double counter strike with piercing on it is very very good for PvE when you're facing fire monsters similar to the Abyssal Garden that we talked about earlier. This is really really good for taking those kind of things out. All round great monster, uh, nothing too overpowered but it's definitely uh, definitely strong. The next monster to talk about is Dracarosa. Now this is an exciting monster, it is a harsh counter to poison, especially Oak Thulu, which ironically it's in the same element of. Um, so whole ground and plus stun immunity, always great for survival and just general reliability. High, high speed, and then it's got Purifying Mist. Now the Purifying Mist is where it really shuts down enemy poison monsters, and then Defang is then the harsh counter to poison monsters. So between those two moves, those are the two kind of most powerful moves on it. And then you've got the double blood crave for when it has a kill to then follow up with sweeping. Now because it's got the whole ground of stun immunity, this is a top-notch sweeper. It is excellent. And you would think that between Defang and Counter-Strike it will have instances where it can't get kills, but actually if it doesn't have the ability to get kills, Purify Mist is a brilliant option anyway, and you can often get kills with Defang because it does a bit of damage, its seconds cost is only 100, it's not too bad. Um, and yeah, just generally a top, top-notch PvP monster. Now, where it gets really interesting is it has the combination move with the two fairies. Um, it actually makes them pretty viable to play, uh, particularly the, the poison fairy, because that has the uh, really good stun move. Um, the move on Dracarosa typically doesn't get used because typically people don't use them with the fairies, but it is pretty awesome. Um, it's like a, a Nova Blast kind of effect because it doesn't kill itself. Um, and it does similar-ish kind of damage, but it's not piercing. Anyway, it, it's a great move for just full-on sweeping that I've played around with sometimes, and it, it, it does definitely work out. It's a lot of fun. So this is a top-notch sweeper with support in it, and very reliable. Harsh counter to poison. Next we have Flocculosaurus. Now this is a shop-only monster, uh, at least it has been since release, and it's a lot of fun. It's I've put it as S plus for PvP. I I don't really know yet whether or not it is a top notch PvP monster. It's kind of hard to say for now. However, um, there's something about it which is just very very good and unique for now, which is the aggressive entrance. So when this in uh, comes into the battle, it reliably hits all the enemies. It hits through camouflage. It hits through stealth. And what's great about it is that right now in PvP, there's a lot of shielding going on. Um, we've had so many shields come into the game. Um, which get countered by piercing quite nicely, but often they do slow slow you down. An aggressive entrance will get rid of all the shields, so it gets rid of any shields and stealth from the enemy team when this monster enters, um, which is incredibly good. Now the speed on it's not too great. You can tactical retreat to get the entrance multiple times. It messes up any sleep you're trying to do on the enemy, or generally any control, because sometimes it will kill things off that you don't want to kill off. Um, so you do have to be very careful with how you play this, but um, this monster ultimately counters sleep shields, um, it's got the finishing snap which counters a few monsters and otherwise it's just a brilliant quick move to sort of use a few times before then tactically retreating or the dual slayer bane, a uh, very solid move. With this amount of attack dual slayer bane will kill most things and otherwise you've got the counter shock uh, which is a sort of I would say it's optional. On release I said it was really it was really good, but I think it is an optional move because Dual Slayer Bane does come up a lot. So this is definitely a PvP monster for those kind of interactions where you want to get rid of stealth and shields and that kind of stuff. And um, otherwise just a reasonable sweeper. The next monster to talk about is Lionheart. So Lionheart um, is quite fun, but not necessarily that powerful. Um, as you can see by the tier list ratings, it, it's good for general use, but that's mainly because you can skip lots. Um, so the thing about it is you want it to kind of either be at 100% health or at 1%, uh, sorry, at 1 HP, because it has the move uh, from the brink and whole ground, obviously. Uh, that's how you get to 1 HP. So from the brink will then rip fully heal it again and increases its stats. So you keep you keep doing that if if it's getting hit off 100%. If it is on 100%, you can confident strike and kill things. You can also heal it up with vengeful recovery if a teammate's died. So it's a lot a lot of it's focused around the confident strike, which is why it gets it a bit tricky because confident strike monsters are not the most reliable. However, what's cool about this monster is when it gets killed, it turns into the mythic version of it, and then natural selection suddenly can hit 
legendaries as well so then it becomes very powerful now in pvp basically this gets countered by poison uh not by piercing but basically people will stun it or sleep it or poison it or whatever else or refuse to put it into its mythic version just keep hitting it down out of confidence strike range and then they need to venge or recovery or from the brink and they just get stuck in a loop that it doesn't actually do enough it's fine but it's just not nothing that exciting in pve is where this really gets exciting because the ai will just randomly uh hit it turn it into its mythic version or all that kind of stuff so you can do some fun stuff with it it's powerful but nothing too overpowered the next monster to talk about is Mark's Moth. This is the first one and uh, of the moths, and we're going to be looking at the Poopaper a little bit uh, in a little bit. Basically, you've got the Poopaper, which is like a super tanky monster that comes in, passes a bit of time, and then turns into the moth. There's one of these for each element, and the Earth element is very much on theme with Earth, as lots of them are. They're on theme with the different elements, and it's a throw monster. So when it enters it has the triple entrance it has double catapult which it can do instantly because it gets a turn instantly it can also summon six more rocks so it can actually summon nine rocks as soon as it enters uh, and it can then heal itself with a quick devour now healing itself with a quick devour is surprisingly useful because it is very tanky it's got high defense the double catapult is not super super powerful uh, but it is definitely powerful enough to kill unbuffed monsters um, the low speed ones the one was with high health it won't necessarily kill all of those, uh, but it, it's a good sweeping move. And then it's immune to uh, poison, sleep, and stun. So looks kind of overpowered, but actually you've got to get through the Poopapo in order to get to this moth. If you don't, then it goes into the five-star version. And that five-star version has the same move set, but without the secret skill and without the passives. Now you've already used the secret skill, so that doesn't matter. But the main thing here is that it has lower stats. And that means that the double catapult doesn't do enough damage. So this, compared to the other moths, is slightly less exciting. Because if it does get killed, uh, if the Poopipa does get killed before and you get the 5 star version, you end up with a monster that isn't very good. And it has to summon Swarm to get the rocks first, unless you're using this Link Earth team. So where do I think this fits in? Well, probably with Link Earth. So if you're doing a proper throw team and you want a source of rocks then this is a pretty reliable source of rocks. Um, even if you get the 5 star version of the, of the monster, you can still use it to create 6 rocks. And maybe you've got some way to kill it off um, so it doesn't sit there on your team and slow you down. And then the double catapult is pretty good sweeping. It's quite slow, it's 200 seconds. But um, yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. It's kind of an average monster, uh, quite fun to play around with. Now we have the Poopapa, which uh, we just talked about. And as you can see, super, super high defense and high health. It's got low speed, comes in, and then you can um, pass 100 seconds before turning it into the uh, the moth. There's one of these for each um, of the elements, and they're all earth element. I've only included one because they all look the same. The only thing is they turn into the different moths. And if they get killed, then they turn into the five-star version of the moth. So shield entrance plus high health and high defense makes it ridiculously tanky. And what you want to have for these is not don't speed up the attacks. You can speed up the entrance speed, but don't speed up the attacks because then you can pass the 100 seconds with two purifies or a rebuild. Uh, more typically, you do it with the two purifies. So it, it, they kind of work, but they're not the most exciting. Um, they're fun to play around with, and you can't have multiple in a team uh, because they can't turn into their, their moth unless they're the only pooper pair in, in, the, in the field. These are actually all three legendaries we got, so... Um, they're a lot of fun, and I'm very grateful that we did get them. The next legendary to talk about is Pandemonium. Now, this is kind of a wacky monster, and <laughs> not a lot of people like it. Um, so, the exciting bits about it are that it has 60% speed, and it's got 100% chance of putting something to sleep with exhausting sleep. Also, it's got the blood poison, which you can use to poison all the enemies. It doesn't do any damage, but it sets up uh, anything that you want to do with poison those are the two exciting things about it so you can set this up to do other other uh for, for your other monsters you can set the battle up or you can basically put something to sleep and itself to sleep it's very hard to kill with its massive defense and uh immunity to killer moves and poison but it doesn't do a whole lot else that's basically what i'm going to say about it i mean the the, the issue with it is it's it kind of does too many different things that you don't want poison and sleep in the same team 
uh, like at the same time. You either have poison or sleep, so whichever one you're setting up for, you have one dead move. The hit all you're never going to use, so really it's only got two moves, and one of them is a stun move that heals the enemy, and often things have stun protection, so you don't really get to use that. So that's where it gets really awkward, and uh, they may buff or redesign this monster, but it, it doesn't fit into that much stuff. I think the most exciting thing is that 100% chance of sleep at high speed. The next monster we're going to take a look at is Scorpio Guys. So this is far more exciting. Uh, it was the Halloween monster, which um, I am including in this uh, in this video. So what makes it most exciting is the high attack stun convert. Well, I mean, there's so much to say really. It, it has crazy damage potential. Toxic Strike um, is the move which you probably won't use. However, um, it gets set up when it enters because of auto poison all and doesn't remove the poison either and it does incredibly high damage so even against buffed enemies this has some damage potential with toxic strike also double poison eater as we said earlier on in this video with um uh, i can't remember the name of it now the um arborbratus i think it was it does a high damage when you have two targets that are poisoned and because this has such high attack it can still kill buffed monsters and that can kill two at a time with 100 seconds the Stun Converter means it gets extra turns, and with Raw Poison Massacre, you can hopefully sw sweep the whole enemy field, then trigger some kind of stun, get another turn, sweep the whole enemy field, because they all enter Poison with the Auto Poison all, and yeah, just sweep like crazy. This monster's kind of insane. They might nerf it at some point, because, well, I, I think they should. Uh, the speed of it is just way too high. You have entrance control stuff that can then poison the whole field for this first turn in the front line and just sweep everything. Um, it, it's kind of nuts. So that's this monster, there's not really more to say about it, just absolutely crazy poison sweeping. Um, the raw restriction is something which they've been pushing a bit to try and get protectors out, out of play. And it's exciting to see another earth monster that is poison, because uh, there's definitely some, some poison stuff going on there, and having a bit more means it can be more of a theme in the element. The next monster to talk about is the Rockoid, and this is a full-on throw monster that is very viable. So um, the there's a few unique things about it. The, the enemies, sorry, teammates dying, creating rocks at the back. There's some stuff to do with that, some combo stuff to do with that. The um, secret skill is basically like a slay bane all type effect. It's just when it gets a turn, you can potentially just do for a 200 second move, kill the whole enemy team by sacrificing a load of stuff at the back of your team. Which if you're in a throw team, that's not a problem at all. I've messed around with throw teams before and basically you find that you have a massive excess of rocks. Unless everything is going really really well and you're using up all your rocks and killing things, you tend to have an excess of rocks. So a move like Throwmageddon is very good to have uh, as a kind of like, if you need it you can just throw everything at them and destroy the whole enemy team. Um, oh sorry, I meant that the other way around. If you need to you can destroy the whole enemy team by throwing a load. Um, the really cool thing here is the Sterocoid. So there are a lot of special rocks that can benefit from the Sterocoid and they become super, super stat buffed. Um, so they can pretty much one-shot stuff with their hit hit moves and that kind of stuff. The fact that Sterocoid is only 50 seconds is kind of insane. Um, you've also got a 70 second move that can uh, deal critical damage to anything with whole ground. So many monsters have whole ground. And then you've got a throw that doesn't use rocks. So, I mean, all round, this monster is just brilliant for uh, for damage, for a bit of combo stuff going on, and uh, very powerful. Good monster to add to the game. It's really pushed throw ahead uh, from where it was. The, now moving on to Mythic. So we start with Arachnidiva, and this one is brilliant. So Death Revenge has always been a, a sort of strategy that's like on the fringes, but not really something that's been supported. And this monster is kind of the closest to... Death Revenge support that we've had. Reason being is the scapegoat you can uh, make your Death Revenge monsters be auto protect monsters. Now Arachn Diva herself is weak to protect a killer. She doesn't make monsters weak to protect a killer when she uses scapegoat on them, um, but it's sort of assumed that she has protect. Basically protect skills count as being a protector monster, so scapegoat counts as that. Um, anyway, the ultimate payback is incredibly powerful. Camouflage keeps her alive. She's got um, the scapegoat, which has brilliant combo potential for various things. And then you've also got vengeance, which is like an upgraded retribution, does piercing. 
and then Bloodlust. And then finally, the secret skill is a brilliant sweep all move if she's the last monster alive, which if you're using if you have her at the end of your team and you're using the scapegoat to make the other things protectors because she's got camouflage become, makes her very very difficult to kill first so they'll kind of be forced to kill off the other moves and then you can use the last resort not necessarily the the route you want to take ultimately she's a great um support slash sweeper type thing that can do some combo stuff there's a lot to do with her and she's very powerful um too much to really go through uh in this video but there yeah there's, there's a lot going on Next monster is Missile Torment. Now this is another strong Earth Protector. We had one earlier on with Arboreal Bratis, uh, also the Buff Buffalo, and now we have a Mythic Order Protector, which doesn't look like so much when you're looking at it, but then actually in practice it becomes very, very powerful. Now the Knockback and Desperate Chomp moves have been reduced to 160 seconds since I took the screenshot, so it's a little better. Also the Secret Skill is now 1 second rather than 50, so this is been buffed uh, but yeah very solid monster for the reason that it has high defense high health and whole ground and also it can heal so pure overwatch is very very hard to get around only piercing can get through it um, because yeah anything hits it it gets a turn if you poison it it's still going to get a turn it can remove the poison so unless you've got piercing you're pretty much going to be losing a monster to this and in the time that you're doing that you're going to be wasting a lot of time hitting it because it's got such high defense. And I mean, when you get it to hold ground, now because the the secret skill is one second, you can, uh, if you're using this yourself, you can flip it to full HP and then pure Overwatch again. So then they've got to get got to get through its health again before then it can use Desperate Chomp, heal up. Then they've got to get through that again to hold ground and then kill it off. It's a massive tank, and uh, the only downsides of it is it's weak to both Protect and Chrono Killer which means it's relatively easily to critical attack as well as it may open your your uh, team up to assassinate or uh, times up as well as the fact we now have ways to bypass protectors however ultimately this is a uh, mega tank and great protector uh, for earth to have really carrying on the earth has strong protectors next monster to talk about is nagandia another mythic here and this is a um, bit of a weird one Basically, where this works well is in poison teams, or in teams where you can take advantage of everything that it has, because it's a little bit all over the place. It's got this daunt move, which is like stun flash, but um, can't, uh, but bypasses any immunity to stun, and then petrify, which is like a retribution, but then not quite. It's like a weaker, weaker piercing retribution type thing. And then Wrecking Ball, which is a piercing assassinate, but the damage isn't actually that incredible that it can kill them uh, when it's awakened, but it won't kill necessarily all mythics and that kind of stuff. It won't kill like buffed monsters. So um, it, it's a little bit wacky, this monster, but when you can take advantage of the Poison Revenge, when you can take advantage of the Retribution, the Petrify, um, then it kind of starts coming together. Now, where you take advantage of the Petrify is if you're using this in a Retribution team, like, for example, one with Protectors, so then those get killed off, which then charges your other moves, uh, your other monsters with uh, Retribution effects. So then the Petrify gets charged and it can do that. The other way to make, moves, make use of it is in a Raw team or Stealth team. So because now Raw bypasses Protectors, what you can do with the Petrify is you kill something and turn it into a Rock, a uh, rockoid and then leave it and bypass it with everything else that then means that it can come around to Nagandia's turn again uh, and then she can wrecking ball using that rock to kill something else and then maybe the next turn she can then petrify something else and basically you're slowing down the enemy team while sweeping them so that's where I think it can get really strong and I think it has definite potential but it definitely needs that combo stuff going on or just otherwise synergy with your team because it won't uh, it won't really perform super super well uh, unless you've got that stuff the next monster to look at is Naturgle this is full on earth throw stuff um, you've got it creates two rocks when it enters it's got a 50 second oh no sorry where is it yeah 50 second summon six rocks in the secret skill you kind of need it awakened to get that um, also the the blood crave becomes blood fury when you awaken it which is pretty important 
Now this monster has low defense, it's quite easy to kill, but the sweeping power is absolutely nuts. So if you have this in a throw team, you heard me talking earlier on about having an excess of, of rocks. This eats through your excess of rocks, but if you do have an excess of rocks, then it can just sweep like crazy. In fact, throw can sacrifice the uh, monster at the end of your team, even if it isn't a rock. So in a lot of cases, um, if you're using this in PvP, for example, where each of us have 16 monsters, you can just start throwing your own monsters to kill things, because actually if you're ahead, you can kind of do that anyway with the Blood Fury and just, just get through their team, like uh, the insane thing this is. So also quite decent speed, it can attack the turn it, um, the first turn it gets, which is uh, a lot of other throw monsters don't really have that in quite the same way, that they can't get serious damage on the first turn or that kind of thing. So this is a uh, full on earth sweeper, uh, earth throw sweeper and great for the throw strategy. The last monster to go through is Securalisk and this might just be the best monster in the game. It's a little awkward to use but otherwise it's super super powerful. So it's a bit slow, but it's got good defense, so it gets a turn fairly reliably. It's got Stun Counter, which is just an insane passive, and Dream World, which is the chance to sleep monsters when they enter. That is a very unique passive and incredibly powerful for controlling the battlefield, because as if you use this with sweepers and you just start sweeping through, if you hit any stun, it doesn't matter because your, your team's protected from stun, this just gets a turn. And also, as some of those monsters enters, they'll enter asleep. So you, uh, asleep, so you can just ignore them and kill the other things. Double Repulse is a very powerful support move too, so when this gets a turn, typically what you want to do is you want to use Raw Hypnotize, put something to sleep, then Double Repulse the two other things, and hope that one of the entering monsters comes asleep, and then you've got two out of four asleep, you've got the other two. Maybe you want to try and Dream Crush, um, it might be better to leave them asleep, or maybe leave them asleep for a while and then Dream Crush at the end. Um, of their sleep to get the kill. Dreamcrush has a high seconds though. Ultimately what I'd do is try to use other monsters to set up kills for this, so putting things to whole ground so then this can do double bloodthirst. And if you do manage to get the double bloodthirst going, double bloodthirst plus stun counter is just nuts. So this is a very cool monster and you can see with the assisted quake they're kind of pushing earth sleep here. Uh, I don't know if earth sleep could really be a thing, uh, not quite yet maybe, but there's a lot going on in terms of just raw power here with sweeping control um, that is ca cannot be ignored. Securalisk is awesome and um, an exceptional addition to the game. So now we're going to move to the final section which is having a look at what's been added. So here we have the two themes and two sub-themes uh, for Earth that I listed at the beginning and we're looking at the new monsters that have been added, where they fit into these themes. So taking a look at the throw theme first you can see Throw has, uh, it's had four monsters, which in the grand scheme of things, because it already had loads, um, it's not a huge addition, but at the same time these monsters that have been added are actually very good. So you've got Naturgle and uh, the Rockoid, very, very powerful Throw monsters that have really supported and boosted the strategy. Um, the Mark's Moth is not the most exceptional monster, but for creating rocks it can be very good, and the Mortar Monster there, which is a Mortar Throw monster, um, that can uh, use the rocks quite effectively for piercing damage while being tanky itself. So throw has been boosted, even though the main focus, I would say, of this uh, huge overload of earth monsters as they've doubled the number of legendaries and mythics um, was to build out some other themes. So protector theme, you can see we've had a few great additions there. I went through them before, being uh, very flattery of them. And mortar sub theme, there hasn't been too much, but those two monsters... Uh, well, we did get the crazy army data that has the combo potential. And the poison sub-theme. Well, the poison sub-theme has been expanded dramatically. Um, I would say that a couple of those, it's kind of minor. I mean, it's the poison revenge in the Gandia and the pa pana uh, pandemonium um, only has the blood poison, which is just for setup. Also, Black Titan is, is so low, so maybe, maybe, maybe not. But um, there's definitely doing some stuff with earth poison and there's some powerful stuff there. So what do we see that was new? Actually, we've got a retribution strategy coming out. Taking a look at this, the main kind of thing that is pushing this um, is Arachnadiva. Arachnadiva having the scapegoat just very, very nicely supports retribution. And in fact, retribution itself works well with Earth because we have these rocks and we have protectors. So protectors in general 
help retribution because those are the things that will get killed so the other monsters can then use their retribution and creating these rocks um well we have so many things which create rocks or create protectors can a shogun here actually uh creates two gold oil snakes in line which are perfect for retribution strategies and then as you can see we've um the five monsters on the right they are the ones which are the new ones the six uh sorry yeah six on the left they are the existing ones um so i would say retribution is definitely a theme in earth now it's something which they expanded more than anything else um as they doubled the number of monsters in here and i went through it mostly in the things on the right um so we don't need to no, don't need to detail that too much the one thing which you might not um, think so much as a retribution theme here is the Lionheart, but that is because it's got ventral recovery. So, if you try to ignore Lionheart and you kill other things, or if you have some way of like basically with protectors and stuff that you make the enemy kill those, then it can get to 100% health for confidence strike much more easily. Um, and then on the left here, we've got quite a few things which uh, which can definitely work with a retribution strategy. Uh, Emeraldius has the link double retribution, which is full on. Yep, that's retribution. And um, yeah, the other ones that can uh, either help set it up or benefit from it. So where does Earth stand now? Well, we've got tons more monsters. Uh, we've got the retribution theme that's come out. We've also uh, those sub themes and themes which I uh, picked out at the beginning. They definitely did get expanded. Um, some of them a little bit more than others. For example, Mortar didn't get expanded too much, but they've definitely all had some extra stuff added. Uh, they haven't kind of just thrown in retribution stuff and nothing else and i think retribution itself fits very well w for earth like i was saying with the protectors uh brilliant kind of stuff going on and throw one of the issues with it which we talked about at the beginning is that it doesn't really have huge damage potential it has the support stuff and generally the monsters are tanky but they don't really have huge damage potential so those throw monsters were added this year they definitely did recognize that throw needed some more damage potential um, they had like a couple of, I think, super epics with good damage potential, but in reality, we, we need we need legendaries and mythics with damage potential. So we've had got some of that stuff now. And another thing that was missing was stun protection. We've had some incredible stun protection added for Earth that it's like full on viable in PvP, and you've got a lot of Link Earth um, synergy stuff that you might you might want to use. Oh, well, I say Link Earth, I mean Earth stuff. Um, Link Earth. Is still very restricted to throw the different moves that are there um, most of them are for throw teams either using it's like link catapult or that link summon minions that kind of stuff it doesn't really do much other than throw so it's hard to make a link earth team um, because link moves typically are a big push towards using just a certain element and if you use just earth then you kind uh, you want to take advantage of the link moves and the link moves are throw moves which if you don't want to build a throw team or you don't have the particular things to make a good throw team then you can't really do that so much so i think yeah link of being throw is a, is a little bit annoying there you have got the link double retribution on emeraldius but there's not much outside of throw so what does earth need well i think they need throw to be more integrated with other stuff you've got Tiamazus is a brilliant example of a poison monster which actually has catapult. So that's a monster which you wouldn't necessarily think, okay, I'm going to play this with um, with earth monsters because it doesn't really have synergy with other earth, earth monsters. However, now with the catapult move, it suddenly does. So I think I think it needs a little bit of that kind of stuff going on where things that benefit from having rocks in the team, um, but aren't necessarily throw monsters themselves or throw monsters which then support certain other archetypes as well so that they can be built around and be a little bit more flexible rather than just throw 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 so the idea I, I come up with here is that maybe throw monsters which don't throw from the back of the team instead they um, sacrifice a rock teammate and then throw that at the enemy and um, they instead of creating rocks at the back of the team they crop them uh, create them next in line now the reason being is that this synergizes really nicely with retribution because of course protectors on the field they will hopefully die before your retribution monsters and then trigger the retribution or otherwise you're throwing these monsters so then that triggers retribution um, because you're killing them so that kind of stuff going on i think would be really exciting for earth and it would be very on theme with earth 
Um, the other thing uh, that I was talking about just a second ago is that link that isn't just restricted to throw because you wouldn't use a link poison, uh, link earth poison team because there's no link poison moves. Uh, there's just no reason to do link earth poison. So, you know, have a bit of that in there and then maybe it will push people to make earth teams that are focused on different archetypes and maybe have no throw in them at all. And then, um, last point here is maybe some control stuff. So while other elements uh, will do it with stun or sleep, that's the typical two kind of control things, I think a more on theme for Earth would be um, around protectors. They're known for having good protectors, and as we saw this year we got some brilliant protectors, and it would be great if um, for control it was more focused about having those protectors not die, or you know maybe um, an auto protect plus or uh, I'm, I'm I'm just spinning off the head the top of my head here, but like something that maybe means that raw moves can't get round it, or you know that kind of thing. I mean that, that maybe that could be broken, but like something like that, boosting the effectiveness of protectors, so that that can be their way of controlling the battle rather than stopping the the enemy team from getting turns. Because technically, if you can tank or redirect the moves to something that can tank then that will work for controlling the battle, It'll give you the space to then take over and win. Uh, so I think that would be great for Earth to have. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed watching this, it's a bit of a long one, as I said, um, the other videos are not going to be quite so long. Uh, when they come out you'll be able to see them in a playlist or links in the description. hope you enjoyed the video lots, uh, thanks very much for watching. And um, just a quick little mention of the Patreon. I'm not going to mention it in the other videos too, but I, if you remember at the beginning, um, I've set up a Patreon. Um, so if you're interested in that, then the link's in the description for that too. So um, yeah, great. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.